finds washing is actually a really important part of uh, an archaeological process. Sometimes it's seen as a bit of the sort of the handmaiden to digging, but actually it's really important. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that you can see the find properly, so that first of all we know it is a find and not just a little bit of stone, but also so it's ready to be looked at by specialists. The more you learn, the more interested you become, so I'll definitely be back. Very enjoyable. Hard work, but very enjoyable, very rewarding. But, but I think in, in a way it's not so much what comes out of it, it's been a process and um, it's more what we've been finding as we go along and the enjoyment uh, and quality of the experience. Here we are at Trench 1. It's not very far from Trench number 2. Um, but actually it's very, very different. We've got, a, we've got a layer of glacial cobbles that run across the valley of the Germany Beck. And in different places, it's been very possible that these have been able to be used as a fording point. In fact, we think that we can show in amongst the cobbles that there's been a causeway, at least in this spot, that's been used for people getting across the river. It's very exciting for us if we were able to imagine that that causeway was here in 1066 at the time of the Battle of Fulford. But so far we don't have hard and fast evidence for that. It's very difficult to find what happened on a single day. But what we have been able to do is we've been able to show that there is a good crossing point here and that it's been used um, during some point in the medieval period. We don't know exactly when. That's why we're here now working on to try and find some dating evidence. But behind us you can see that people are working away on cleaning up the cobbles. So we're heading towards a, po a point where we can draw um, and photograph this, this material before we then put a section through it. So typical archaeology, we spend ages cleaning it up and making it look beautiful and then we're going to go through it. When we go through it, that's one of those opportunities we're going to have for finding any trapped material in amongst the cobbles that might give us a bit of a date for when this area was in use. I think there's definitely community spirit here and I think it's really um, encouraging and I think anybody who comes here is made to feel really, really welcome. I would say to people, just get involved. Uh, there's not many digs that I know of like this where people can just turn up and straight away you're into the action. You just can't beat it. With us on the team is Mary Wickerts, who's with us all the way from Sweden, from the Gothenburg City Museum. Mary's here because she's a specialist in, in Viking materials and, and Viking archaeology. In 2004, I walked with Chas and was allowed to go back to the parish hall back here. And uh, that's where I met John, the archaeologist that's here too at the site. And uh, they showed me a lot of debris. And I thought, my God, what fabulous material you have. And they went, no, we don't. And I said, well, this is slag. And there was a big, huge thing that looked like a flat bun made totally out of the remains of iron and slag from uh, what you would use in a melting process when you reuse iron. They also had a lot of horseshoes. And the horseshoes, some of them were very small. And they laughed, no, that's not horseshoes. We don't have horseshoes like that. And I said, well, we do. And if Fulford is a Scandinavian troop advancement led by a Norwegian king, then we also have packing horses. And the packing horses back then would be as small as the Shetland pony is today. And that would be a Gotlandsrus, is what we call it. So, uh, in the hence of that, the shoe sizes on the iron shoes for the horses fitted perfectly. And to top it off, back then we had a lot of research going on in Sweden, so we knew that the horseshoes we saw were Viking Age. And that's why I'm part of it here. I am representing the other perspective. 